It is entitled, An Invitation to Be Your Authentic Self. Can everybody hear me? What's up? <laughs> it's so good to, to see you. And since I am inviting you to be your authentic self, I'm going to allow myself to be authentic right now and say, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> so thank you for just loving me up and <sighs> sending me your energy and your love. Yes? Yeah. Thank you. So welcome to She Recovers in Miami again. She recovers. The she within you recovers. The real and authentic you. So I want to say to all of you, you might be having so many different emotions that come up for you this weekend. And I want to say that no matter what you're feeling, no matter what your emotions happen to be, that there's someone in this room who's feeling exactly the same way you do. No matter what you've done, there's someone in this conference who's done exactly what you've done. No matter what mistakes you've made, there's someone in this room who's made those same mistakes. So I want to let you know you're not alone, and we've got you. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, you're not alone. I got you. I got you. I got you. It don't take that long to say, I got you. <laughs> So I want to talk to you tonight about returning to your authentic self, the highest version of yourself, by way of recovery. And even though She Recovers is a community of women where we are recovering from any and everything, so we are recovering from addiction, we are recovering from dependencies, we are recovering from patterns. I want to talk to you a little bit about the recovery of. The recovery of that something about you, that essential aspect of you that is whole, perfect, and complete. The definition of recovery is the rediscovery of something that you've disconnected from. It's the rediscovery of something that's been lost. So we are here to recover our essential nature of wholeness. The part of us that is real, the part of us that is true, the part of us that is enough, even though sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget who we are through all the pain, through all the trauma. The magnificence of our beingness kind of gets numbed out. And I heard a story a while ago about a little girl who begged her parents to allow her to have a few moments alone with her new infant baby sister. And they finally relented and said, OK, you know, we'll give you a couple of minutes alone with your infant baby sister. But they hung outside the nursery so they could hear what was going on. And what they heard the little girl say to her little sister was, will you please tell me who I am because I'm starting to forget. So what happens is we are born into, we may have been born into dysfunction, we may have been born into trauma, but we were created out of greatness. Can I get an amen? amen. But we forget who we are. And so I want to talk about the recovery, rediscovery, and reawakening to your essential nature of wholeness. I want to talk about the rediscovery of your innate identity of worthiness. Let me hear you say, I'm worthy. I'm, worthy. I'm, enough. I'm enough. And I want to talk about the reawakening to your badass sexiness. Can I get an amen? I used to think that being sexy or being enough had to do with how much weight I gained or lost. 
or the kind of clothes I had on or the kind of makeup I had on or where I lived or how much money I had. But I came to the realization that as long as I was walking around with those insidious illusions of not being good enough, not being worthy, that I couldn't suck it up, tone it up, color it up, no matter how hard I tried. Yeah. Because those illusions of unworthiness, shame, and not enoughness were making unconscious decisions for me without my conscious permission. Can you dig what I'm talking about? Because un unconscious unworthiness and not enoughness and shame, it shows up as you're saying yes when you mean no. How many times have you said yes when you meant no? It shows up as having unhealthy boundaries or not having any boundaries at all. It shows up as you accepting something in your life that you know on a soul level is too small for you. But the illusion of unworthiness and not enoughness will lie to you convincingly. It's cunning, baffling, and powerful, yes? It will lie to you and say, oh, but you better grab this thing that you know is too small for you because if you don't, you're going to lose everything. So you better grab it. And I remember a while ago, I was in negotiations with a potential client. And I was feeling so good on this call, all spiritual. I'd done my meditation and everything, feeling all good. And all of a sudden, my energy went from here to boom to here. I was like, whoa, what's going on? And I touched myself on my tummy. And I said, what's the matter, boo? I call her boo. <laughs> I said, what's the matter, boo? She said, I'm afraid. I'm like, what are you afraid of? She said, I'm afraid to ask for what I really want. And in that moment, in recovery, I hit another bottom. It was a yay bottom. I hit another bottom because I had gotten sick and tired of being sick and tired of saying yes when I meant no, of saying yes to something that wasn't big enough for me. And I made a decision right then and there that I could not make decisions from that place anymore. I want to hear you say, I can't do it anymore. I can't make decisions from that place anymore. Do you mean it? Yes. <laughs> but here's what I knew. Is that even though I had made that decision to not make decisions from that place anymore. That the part of me that felt unworthy was powerless to do anything about it. That I had to connect to a power greater than myself that is within myself. That the power greater than yourself is your real self, is your authentic self. I knew that I couldn't do it from here, but I had to do it from reconnecting to my authentic self. And I took that time and I went into my sacred space within and I did my soul recovery work, the recovery of my soul, the recovery of who I really am. And I came out of that spiritual practice with the decision to leave the deal on the table. Sometimes you got to leave the deal on the table. Let me hear you say, sometimes, sometimes. I got to leave the deal on the table. And, and it doesn't matter whether it's business, it doesn't matter whether it's a relationship, it doesn't matter whether it's family. Sometimes we got to leave the deal on the table. But here's what I understood when I made that decision, is that when I leave the deal on the table in the name of truth, when I leave the deal on the table in the name of my authentic self, in the name of my worthiness, when I leave the deal on the table, that the universe will fill that void with the infinite, inexhaustible something that is beyond your wildest imagination. Can I get an amen? I promise you, the universe never leaves you hanging. Because when you say no, to something that is too small for you, to something that no longer serves you, you are vibrationally saying yes to that which you really deserve. 
as you can tell, I'm pretty passionate <laughs> about this message because I lived that way for so long, and it was painful. And so many people come to me for help with relationship issues, with financial issues, with career issues. And when we sit down and unpack what's really going on, the bottom line is they don't feel worthy or deserving enough for what it is that they really want. And I'm asking you, just like I ask them and just like I ask myself, what is it costing you? What is it costing you to say yes when you mean no? What is it costing you to stay in a vision that you've outgrown? I think that the cost is too high. This weekend, she recovers. She recovers her soul. She recovers her authentic self. She recovers the truth of who you are before you forgot. I just want you to just take a moment and just take a deep breath. And as you let go, just let it go. All the illusions that you've taken on about yourself, all the lies that you've told yourself about yourself, just let them go and try to just catch a glimpse of the purity of who you are, the reality of who you are, the magnificence of who you really are. I've come to look at these illusions of unworthiness and not enoughness and shame as emotional addictions. When we become so emotionally addicted to this particular way of being that we've taken it on as our identity, and it's not your identity. We become addicted to procrastination by way of avoidance, where we become addicted to social media and Netflix, where we click on a movie knowing that we're clicking on a series. <laughs> and knowing that a series has 13 to 15 episodes, but we swear we're just gonna watch one, and we come to about three, four days later, <laughs> numbed out, zoned out, and disconnected from our authentic self again, and then we beat ourselves up again. I created soul recovery because I was dying in recovery. Unworthiness was killing me. Feelings of not being good enough and trying to pretend that I was good enough was killing me. I had to find a way to heal Boo. Just put your hands on your tummy and say, hey, Boo. <laughs> I had to find a way to heal Boo. And so soul recovery is a spiritual practice that not only addresses and heals the typical addictions that we are so familiar with, but those emotional addictions, those core unconscious emotional addictions that is the foundation of everything. It was 35 years ago was the first time I caught a glimpse of my authentic self. And it was when I ran out of my house barefoot because the obsession for another hit of crack cocaine was so incredibly powerful, I couldn't take the time to put on my shoes. And I ran out of my house and I jumped in a cab and I said to the cab, Dunsmere and Pico, because that's where the dope dealer lived. And instead of taking me to the dope dealer's house, he turned around to face me in the back seat and he said, young lady, please don't kill yourself today. Now that wasn't big news to me. <laughs> I've been told a million times, please don't kill yourself today. Especially by my seven-year-old daughter who had been removed from my care at that time because I was deemed an unfit mother. Mommy, please don't do this again. So that wasn't the magic. The magic was that the moment this taxi driver looked into my eyes, the fog lifted, just for an instant. The fog lifted. It was a spiritual experience, and I caught a glimpse of the real Esther. 
I caught a glimpse of my soul. I caught a glimpse of what it felt like to feel free, to, to not be afraid, to be whole, to be complete, to be enough, just for an instant. And then the fog came back again. But it was just enough for me to understand that if I would have continued to Dunsmere and Pico, that I was going to die that day. Or I could get out of the cab and go back in my house and start my journey of recovery. So that was 35 years ago today. That, not today, but 35 years ago. And now I'm a little over 35 years in recovery. It's been quite an emotional journey because even after getting clean from crack cocaine and alcohol and all mind-altering chemicals, I still had boo to deal with. Right? And so I would get my dream gigs with Rod Stewart and Bette Midler and Beyonce and on stage and doing all of that. And every single day of that, I was waiting for someone to tell me, we just found out, Esther, that you're not good enough and you're fired. I was on Oprah and my girlfriend was watching me on, 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 on television and she said that she said to herself, relax, sweetie, you got the gig because I must have looked like so scared, right? So how many times have you gotten the gig? You've gotten the dream relationship, you've gotten the dream situation, but you felt like a fraud for being there. And that is the insidious nature, the insidious addiction to the illusions of unworthiness and not enoughness. But let me tell you who you really are. In your authentic self, in the truth of your beingness, Shame, unworthiness, and not enoughness doesn't exist. It's not real. We've made it real. We've practiced it into being real. But now we have new information. We can have a new experience with ourselves. As first looking at these illusions as addictions and indoctrinated ways of being, and coming to understand that the first step to healing that is to know that you of yourself can't heal it. Getting out of your own way. Releasing control so that something higher than your familiar way of being can do through you, in you, and as you what you can't do for yourself. Yes? <laughs> Most people say, where there's a will, there's a way. No, where there's a will, there's a wall. <laughs> right? So we want to, from a place of such self-compassion, especially this weekend, right? Place of self-compassion. Acknowledge where we are. Be willing to be willing to be willing to release control so that we can tap into that power greater than ourselves that can restore us to sanity and understand me. The power greater than yourself is your real self. It is nearer than your hands and feet. It is closer than your breath. It is right where you are. And then you make a decision, the best decision that you can, at the best of your ability, to turn your will, your wall, and your life over to the care of higher power, God, universe, whatever it is that you choose to call it, the highest version of yourself, as you understand it. And if that aspect is not working for you, then it's time to get a new higher power, it's time to get a new understanding. And as you do that, the fog starts to lift. Patience, boo. Patience, boo. The fog starts to lift, and we start to reconnect to our authentic self. And we awaken, just like Dorothy did in The Wizard of Oz, that we've been tripping. <laughs> that we were on a trip. Because all along, we were safely tucked in our real and authentic self, where we are so divinely cherished, adored, loved, wanted, necessary. How does that feel? 
So I welcome you home. I welcome you to She Recovers in Miami. I welcome you to connect with your sisters. But most of all, I welcome you to connect with yourself. No matter how she's showing up this weekend, she's enough. And she's badass. Yeah. Let the church say amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen.